everybody, welcome back to Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One. I just wanted to share with you a quick tip today. What are wig sisters for? We all learn, grow, and share, and that's what really helps us get the most joy out of our wig life. Heat-friendly styles. We love them, we don't. We love them, we don't. <laughs> Depends on what day it is and what problem we're having, right? There's nothing that beats. A heat-friendly style, brand new, right out of the box. The luxurious feel of the fibers. They just feel so soft and silky. I'm wearing the Raquel Welch's Editor's Pick in Shaded Cappuccino today. And I just... I always marvel at the feel and the realistic look of a heat-friendly fiber. First of all, they don't reflect light in the same way. They're not gonna be quite as shiny as a non-heat-friendly synthetic. But heat-friendly fibers do come with their own little set of challenges, don't they? I've made some reviews on how to care and maintain heat-friendly fiber, but today I wanna talk about a different challenge that we have with heat-friendly fiber. If you are a fan of heat-friendly fiber, you wear it often and you wear it for long periods of time, you notice that they become stringy very quickly and they tend to, the fibers tend to clump together. And that might not give the most natural movement and look. It's certainly not what you're going for, right? And you find yourself constantly wanting to brush them out which may not be the best thing for longevity of any wig style. So when this kind of stringiness happens in the wig style, I always try to figure out ways to treat that without doing some damage to the hair. So I sort of stumbled on something that really works for me and I just wanted to share it real quick with you today. So what I use is a can of dry shampoo and then I have a white tooth comb and then a, uh, a wig safe brush. Now, I always like to use dry shampoo that has a little more talcum effect. You can get dry shampoos out there that um, don't have any residue, that feel kind of sticky going on until they dry, and that's not the kind of dry shampoo that I'm talking about. I love the Batiste, and this cherry scent is my absolute favorite. Um, Batiste tends to have a lot of talcum, okay? That's when it comes out, it has a powdery look and feel to it until it kind of brushes or shakes out. This has the best effect on drying the oils and the scalp and things. It will also help reduce the look of some excess silicone in the hair, um, but I do try to choose one that has more of a white talcum than something that's clear or sticky. And then I use a wide tooth comb. This is the only comb I ever really use on my wigs is a wide tooth comb, especially heat friendly. This is a must. And then I always carry a purse size wig safe brush. I like, I love these little brushes. They're very easy to control and manage. The bristles aren't too long. They're wig safe. And I can just really get into the root of a style and I'll get a nice fluffy wispy look by using that. So these are the three things that I normally use to, to, to do this little bit of a trick to help keep my wig styles from getting too sticky or gummy looking. Now I'm not talking about the stickiness and the gumminess that you can get from a really dirty wig. If you use a lot of product in your wig or if it just needs a good shampoo, you're gonna know the difference. What I'm talking about here is just the um, the stringiness effect that you can get from a heat-friendly style due to the, uh, the, the chemical composition of those fibers. So here, like I said, I'm wearing the Editor's Pick by Raquel Welch in Shaded Cappuccino. On the left-hand side, I have treated this side, and on the right-hand side, I have not. So you can see that this one is a little more stringy, but sometimes you just want a more fluffy, wispy, separated appearance rather than a stringy one that kind of looks weighed down a little bit, okay? And so on this side, it seems to be a little fluffier, doesn't it? A little more separated, a little wispier. Give it a good shake, okay? What I'm doing is I'm going in at the root just about the first inch or so with this wig safe brush, 
just to separate the fiber. And then I'm going to use my wide tooth comb to further separate it. Now this within itself actually will give it a nice wispier, fluffier look, but it's not going to last. Then I'm going to apply a little bit of dry shampoo. I'm gonna hold it about eight to 10 inches away from the wig. And then I'm gonna shake. All the excess will shake out. You can see where it's much more separated and wispy. And I find that it let that actually lasts longer than just using a brush or a comb by itself. So this is a really good refresh method. It so we just wanna add one more style that is heat friendly. I'm wearing the Ellen Villas Taboo in Rose Blonde Rooted. Now this is a heat friendly style and I'm not particularly fond of these heat friendly fibers. They tangle super easily. Uh, they get dry, they get sticky and gummy very easily, and that will all create lots of stringiness, and I'm noticing that quite a bit. So I've worn this one a couple of times, and it gets kind of uncontrollably controllably stringy. Can you see, you know, at the nape and from the back just how stringy it is? And I think because of the special coating that they use on the heat-friendly fiber, that it's more prone to get stringy. I also notice this a lot with the Noriko wigs, like my Noriko Jackson. Um, they tend to get stringy a lot, and I think that this method could also be used for those non-heat-friendly synthetics that get stringy as well. Um, but the goal here would be to get them separated, get them coated uh, with the talcum and get them separated so that that stringiness doesn't come back uh, for a while. So on the right side of this taboo, I did treat this side. And so what I did was I combed a little bit at the root just to loosen up that root. And then while still holding it upside down, I sprayed in some, um, some Batiste dry shampoo. And as soon as I did that, I gave it a shake just to shake out the excess. But then I went in and just gently rolled that between my hands. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. My goal here would just be to make sure that all of the fibers are coated with that dry shampoo because that's the separating agent. So it kind of dries and separates the outer cuticle of this heat friendly fiber and it lasts, the, the result lasts much longer than just brushing alone. So again, this side has been treated, seems to be a little more fluffy and wispy and this side has not. Again, a little more stringy. You can really tell there. And I really want that wispy look. I don't mind a separated look if that's what I'm going for, but this just looks kind of uh, greasy and stringy to me. Got my Batiste here, which is a talcum based. Okay. This is just as an example. And then I'm gently going to roll that a little between my palms and my hands just to get them just to get everything coated really well then i'm going to go in and do a wide tooth comb and sometimes rather than pulling straight down with the comb horizontal try cocking it to the side just a little because that will eliminate um the stringiness to set up uh in between the places where you've combed it. You see what I mean? So if you hold it a little bit vertical, and again, you'll have to be really careful because your heat-friendly fiber is more prone to that friction. Um, but you can already tell that it's given it a little bit more wispiness. And I can, I can attest to the fact that it lasts a little longer than just uh, combing and brushing alone. So the next time your heat friendly style looks dirty and you feel like you wanna wash it or just to get in there with a brush, try a little bit of dry shampoo and a shake and see if that helps separate and bring some wispiness back to your heat friendly fibers.